doing this show with the Mormon Tabernacle Choir is one of the biggest highlights. I think we were all excited before we got here, but we didn't know, I can only speak for myself, but I didn't know how it was going to affect me until I got here. And this experience has been so wonderful. To be a part of such a great production, I think the show is fantastic. Yeah. I think the characters fit really organically into the show. And, and just, it, for me, it's just a treat to hear the music. I, I feel like I'm getting a free ticket to this mm -hmm. amazing show every mm -hmm. night. Yeah. The Sesame Street tradition for me brings music and humor together. By the time I saw the script, I'm like, oh, this is perfect. This is, you're bringing a little humor element to this amazing choral group. And then with these revered characters from Sesame Street, performing in this hall with this amazing ensemble is just, it's incredible. I don't think it compares to anything we've ever done, so it's a quite ambitious production. The emotion behind all the pieces um, and how beautifully everything was put together. We certainly do a lot of performances, but I don't think this compares to anything. It's, it's, it's quite spectacular. <laughs> oh, thanks. This is exciting, I get to conduct the orchestra. Conducting the orchestra and the choir as Big Bird is a thrill every night. I try to keep it a little light and I try to come up with something different to say to the choir and the orchestra every night, which is fun and a challenge for me. But once I give the count off and start conducting, I believe that Big Bird is really conducting the orchestra and the choir. I know that I'm not really, but I sure, <laughs> I, I imagine that I am, and I think that's what Big Bird imagines that he is too, so it's fun, it's really fun. I can't believe that they would let just me come up in a Big Bird suit and conduct this grand orchestra and this remarkable choir. I don't know who talked them into that. That was, a, that was a great though, I love it. <laughs> when we first saw the conference center, I would say I, the thought that went through my head was how, how can they possibly fit 21,000 people in here. Where are they coming from? Where are they parking? How do they get in? Oh. Where are the, yeah, the logistics. Just, yeah, the logistics. Is that what was, where are they parking? Is that the first thing? Well, all of that, all of that <laughs> came to me. <laughs> and for me, it was just like, of? wow. I was, you're just I was thinking, thinking it was I really, like puppets. Oh, yeah, I like puppets. <laughs> it was really big. That was my first thought. It's really big. Not I thought, the wow. Are. I was thinking the, I the puppets were going to look really small yeah. on that stage. Yeah. That was yeah. the first yeah. thing yeah. I thought. Yeah. That was because well, it's such a huge stage and a huge theater and the puppets are pretty small. I was really happy to see the big the screens, yeah, yeah. The big screens on either side that, of the house. Yeah, it, the experience working with the crew here has been phenomenal. I mean, this is they have bent over backwards. Everything is a yes. They have everything ready for us. The crew is incredible. Uh. Just the stage managers and all the people who do the mics, the sound. I think they're psychics the because they read our minds. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you're going to say, ah, and they have the water. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And they really have the pen. Uh, ah, they fix your microphone. It. Yeah. <laughs> it's amazing. It's, incredible. it's such a technically demanding show that, it, yeah, as a guest performer, I could see someone being intimidated coming into the giant space and 21,000 people every night. But the crew has been so good about bringing that down to a personal level and making them feel so comfortable on stage, and I'm speaking for the performers, um, that all those technical aspects seem to kind of go away once the music starts, once the script starts rolling. It just feels so comfortable. But Ernie, this is the way to the stage. <laughs> oh, wow. Say hello to all the people. Ernie. Doesn't it kind of feel like when you're performing, it doesn't feel like you're in this cavernous no. No, not at all. space. No, it still really feels, feels, feels intimate. It, yeah. it does. Yeah. Yeah. But it feels cozy. It's, actually, it's, it's a kind of comforting because we're in this six foot by three foot <laughs> box. Right. So what's kind of nice is you sometimes forget that the audience is there, right. and then yeah. when you look up and you see the sea of people, <laughs> right. we're kind of lucky that we don't have to actually you know, see them. We so don't it's have to not, see them. Yeah. It's yeah. not as intimidating. Yeah. We're, we're, in a, we're in the little box looking at a monitor when we're working, so we just really are yes. watching ourselves perform. But um, between but between bits when we're on, we look up and it's like, oh wow, there's the audience. Oh wait, there's the okay, there's the and it just it, it keeps, keeps going. going. <laughs> this concert specifically, I find myself watching TV a lot because we have the monitors right at our feet. Usually, we're sort of like checking our script, rehearsing our piece in our head, and it's just so wonderful to hear the choir and the orchestra and Santino. I'm just watching television the majority of the time. <laughs> and David and I are just sitting yeah. there, not even looking at each other, no, just sort of like watching. You have to realize, wait a minute, I have to speak in like two lines. Yeah, I, ha I have to. I have to. <laughs> <laughs>
So the creative process to put this show together was, we said, what do you want us to do? And we came here to Salt Lake uh, City to do our first meeting. They had written a script and performed it in front of us, which was remarkable. It was great. I mean, they were, it, was, it was like having a little show right in front of us. From that moment on, we took the script and did some notes on it and threw it back to them. And then they would rewrite it a little bit. I think maybe there were eight revisions of the script before we came up with what we all agreed was the best version of the script. For the music, it was really important for the Mormon Tabernacle Choir that we do some recognizable Sesame Street songs. I think we were all really initially focused on, well, it's a Christmas concert, we should all just do Christmas songs that we can all sing together and that'll be great. But uh, I, I think, uh, I mean, there's lots of Christmas music in the concert as a whole. They really just wanted the audience to be able to enjoy the songs that they were familiar with. I'm always looking to our tradition of our past composers and when I heard that we were going to do our, kind of our standard songs like Sing and People in Your Neighborhood and Keep Christmas With You, that's when I was really blown away because I expected it to be all Christmas music. And when they came back to us and said, no, we want to use Sing and People in Your Neighborhood and Santino Fontana is going to you know, be a part of that, I was like, this is perfect. Well, Santino Fontana. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he is awesome. <laughs> that voice, that voice is amazing and so much heart. He's so tender and energetic and warm and joyous and fun, and he's just magical. You know, you don't know what you're going to get if you're working with scene partners that you've never met anyway, let alone if they're not human. He really knows how to play with the Muppets and make it feel real mm -hmm. and not forced and treat that character like a fellow actor. Mm -hmm. And it's really easy to work with him. I have a lot of fun in People in Your Neighborhood, and it always feels natural and fun and, and silly, and he's just... He's been wonderful to work Santino's with. Santino's very genuine. And also, yes. there's a trick when you're working with these characters, especially when you're a human being, you have to kind of, a lot of times you have to defer to them, not be as funny or not be as outlandish as perhaps they might be. And I feel like Santino is there with us every step of the way, on even toe to toe. Sharing the stage, not only with the choir, and not only here at this uh, event, but also with characters I grew up with. You know, my cake as a, like an eight-year-old was a cookie monster cake. So to be able to meet David, who's played him since I was a child, and also get to, you know, hang out with them and play and talk to him and sing with him, that's huge. And also getting a little glimpse into their world behind the scenes, it's great. And they're such a nice group of people. I have a very easy, because I'm in the center the, for the whole time, so I just have to get in there and get out, which is a challenge in its own, because yeah. we have to go <laughs> under the set on these little rolly chairs that we slide under. Rolling so under the orchestra, that, right? Yeah, oh, under yeah. the orchestra. Yeah. 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 That is but, my favorite part of yeah. the show. <laughs> we get to, so we have to get to center stage in our little sort of proscenium, yeah. and uh, we can't sort of leave the stage and walk around, right. so we have to go under, under. And it's, and the it's orchestra. And it's like this, we have this much room to yeah. go to, so we're on our backs rolling around upside down what? under the stage like going through a cave yeah. or something yeah. and, and it really does and Peter like put some like tracks on the on the top so we can actually follow the tracks it's like out. a dotted dotted white <laughs> tape line you just keep your eye on the ceiling you're walking like an insect <laughs> <laughs> but, so basically it, it doesn't take much to entertain entertain and, and humor us it's my favorite part of the show a couple times yes. you have to go in and out and you yes. know it's, it's a challenge we're racing against the clock we're trying to get from one place to the other before the lights come up and we have to be speaking and there are several of us that have tracks where we're moving from one place to the other, back and forth, back and forth, maybe up top to the choir, back down. For me, I'm running from one side of the stage to the other, and I have less than like two minutes to uh, get to my next position and perform a different character. I run from doing Grover to doing Bert, and Jason has Bert ready for me, like he's holding it sort of like a football <laughs> for a handoff, and I, I just, I just stick my arm straight out in front of me, and he slips it on, and I'm, I'm practically up like that. Eric mentioned Jason and Lars. We have two amazing puppet wranglers that with us, and we have a whole team of people that. I